Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we are doing the fantasy style rebuild of the Washington Redskins. Coming fresh off of a fantasy Philadelphia Eagles rebuild. We are going to stick in the NFC East and rebuild... Again, one of my least favorite teams. But let's go ahead, jump into the roster, and uh, we'll see how this team's doing. See where we can improve. And the answer is the offensive line, and really the offense as a whole. Defensive line is sick, and I cannot wait. Let's take a look at the team. Of course, maybe the best quarterback in the NFL. Hook'em Horns, Colt McCoy. Gotta love it. Probably the most stereotypical name you could think of any Texas boy. I think Colt McCoy is actually born in, like, Arizona, maybe. I might look into that. Ah, he's from New Mexico. So not Arizona, but, you know, like, basically, what's what's the difference, right? I'm sure Arizona and New Mexico guys are like, well, I'll tell you. It's slightly less arid where I live. All right. Regardless of that, we're going to go ahead and fill in the healthy starters. And this is a fantasy style, so, of course, Alex Smith is our quarterback for now, but he's only an 80 overall, 34 years old. I am going to try and trade him. I don't know what the interest is going to be, but I am going to try. Of course, my favorite player in NFL history, Adrian Peterson, has had a little bit of a resurgence now at 33 years old with the Washington Redskins. I am going to try and trade him. And then, of course, Darius Geis used to be a pal. Got a Fortnite video on the channel of us playing together if you want to check that out. Uh, I made a joke about the Citadel. He didn't care for it too much, and he unfollowed me on Twitter. It was a sad day. But, uh, you know, we'll have to live on somehow. On the offensive line, we are set up pretty nice. We didn't talk about Chris Thompson, but, like, I don't know. I don't know who my running back's going to be, if it is going to be any of these guys. This is fantasy style, so probably not. I'm going to go out and get somebody better, at least in terms of overall in-game. I feel like I always have to say that now because I said... You know, when I, when I was doing my Colts rebuild, I'm like, Darius Leonard, not that good. He's like a 72 overall. People are like, what do you mean? They come back months later. Dar Darius Leonard is the best linebacker in the league. He leads the NFL in tackles. Yeah, dude, he started out at a 99 overall. You're right. I should have realized. Anyway, Trent Williams, Jonathan Cooper. Uh, is this Chase? Chase Rulier. Rulier? Whatever. He's going to be gone. Brandon Sheriff, Morgan Moses. I don't know what we do with Morgan Moses just yet. We'll have to see. Jordan Reed went healthy. He's a fantastic tight end. Vernon Davis and Jeremy Sprinkle. We'll keep them where they are for now. And then the receiving core is not great. Paul Richardson, Jamison Crowder, Josh Doxson. Not a great three, of course. The uh, DUI, Michael Floyd. Probably need to get better at wide receiver. And then on the defensive side of the ball, it's not terrible. Here's the issue, right? The ages of these players. Pernell McPhee is 29 he's going to be regressing he's only 82 overall zach brown only 82 overall he's 28 he'll be regressing mason foster just not good but we do have reuben foster who's a really low overall but he's going to be my guy 24 years old star development yeah he's going to be he's going to be starting i can guarantee and then ryan kerrigan he's been great over the years but he's 30 years old and 88 overall so he's going to be pretty bad here in the next two years. So I'm going to try and trade a lot of these guys. Same thing with DJ Swearinger. 27 quick. Might be able to get away with him for a season. Get him up to like an 87, 88. Try to keep him around that. And then HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix is cool. Monte Nicholson. I don't know if you've seen this. He knocks somebody clean out. And then knocks somebody else right out in the next punch. Loads up on that left hand and just starts swinging. Look up the video if you haven't already. Hashan or HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix good player quick development 25 overall we'll be rocking out with him and then at cornerback Quentin Dunbar former Florida wide receiver turned CB is like the best cornerback to come out of Florida and he played wide receiver <laughs> down there um and I say recently like after Joe Hayden he's been the next best one somehow with Vernon Hargraves and Quincy Wilson and Jalen Tease Tabor somehow Quentin Dunbar has been the best NFL cornerback which is crazy. And we have uh, Fabian Moreau and Josh Norman, who's got to be traded as well. He's 30 years old. I'll try to get him up to an 84 and then trade him, which is probably like a weak simulation. And then the defensive line is just so good. 
with Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and Matt Ioannidis. That's crazy. And then, of course, Caleb Brantley, who was pretty good at Florida. Uh, Stacy McGee as well. Um, he's 28. He's just not going to be good for us. But, uh, yeah, th this rebuild is fantasy style. It's going to involve trading a lot of players because all of them are ages I don't really love. The only, like, player 30-plus that I'm going to keep is going to be Trent Williams just because he's a 94 overall. Uh, the rest I'm pretty much going to get rid of because I have to. I don't really have a choice. Defensive line, perfect. Perfect. The rest I need to improve upon. All right, simulated to week four by... A lot of guys have upgrade points, which is going to give them slightly more trade value, which is what I'm all about. I like that. Although, the only one of that bunch I'll probably trade on defense, who just got a skill point there, uh, I guess would be Josh Norman. I need to make sure Ruben Foster's starting. None of this Mason Foster trash. Or what is this, Sean Dion Hamilton? Indeed it is. I also, I didn't even mention Preston Smith. I didn't see him in the lineup before, but yeah, he's very good. Former uh, Mississippi State player, very underrated. We might change the scheme to fit a 4-3, because Matt Ioannidis, I probably like, is a 4-3 defensive end. Uh, I mean, he's good on the inside, obviously, but then we could bring down Preston Smith to play defensive end as well, with two good defensive tackles in Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne, and this would probably be after trading Ryan Kerrigan. I might make trades like closer to the trade deadline. I usually don't do that, but it could be the move. All right. The trades are really going to annoy Redskins fans here because I'm going to dismantle the team. I'm letting you know. Josh Norman, Pernell McPhee, and a first-round pick this year for Andrew Luck. I think this is going to be our franchise quarterback. I'd love to see how he develops in this. So this is going to be a nice little experiment. Obviously, we can now trade Alex Smith. We have our quarterback of the future. Didn't really expect to trade for Andrew Luck in this, but things happen. And now Alex Smith can go on his way out. I'm going to trade Ryan Kerrigan. I'm letting you... He's going to be bad. He's going to be down to like an 84 overall at the end of the season. I don't want that. I want someone that can improve up to that, not get worse. So I want to trade him at peak value. That's how it works. All right, this is an interesting trade. It's going to be Ryan Kerrigan and Alex Smith for the number one projected pick from the New York Football Giants. Who doesn't love a little non-realistic interdivisional trading it's my favorite let's move on oh okay interesting also did i just say non-realistic instead of unrealistic either way i'm probably stupid for thinking it either way uh that's redundant anyway zach brown ty and Secchi, vernon davis gets me jamal adams i don't know how or why <laughs> i didn't expect that to be accepted i just kind of wanted to uh scale where i was in the trade and yeah, he starts at strong safety now. I get that. I mean, DJ Swearinger was bad. And then, like, he went to the Redskins and he's played fantastically. It's kind of been wild to watch. Where was he previously? Like, Tampa Bay, I feel? Yeah, Houston. He got drafted by the Texans. And then went to Tampa Bay. And then went to the Cardinals for a year. And he's been with the Redskins for the past two years. And he's been good. He's been an underrated player. Uh, but I might have to trade him now. Because I have Jamal Adams, who I'd much rather have. And we have the knockout king, Monte Nicholson. Dude, I keep getting like... I don't know if you guys know who Chris MD is. He's this, uh, I guess, British like FIFA content creator. And Chris Thompson looks like the black version of Chris MD to me. And then uh, Samaj P. Ryan looks like Santa Claus. You know. So that's interesting. There he is, guys. It kind of looks like a fish in this, I guess. And Adrian Peterson. Um, ah, I was going to make a domestic abuse joke, but he is my favorite player ever, so I'm going to give him a pass. <laughs> uh, this is a very interesting start to this video. So this trade is going to be Chris Thompson, Mason Foster, and a third-round pick for a 1 and a 2 from the Arizona Cardinals. That's going to be the last trade I make for this first season. I'm comfortable otherwise where the team is. I don't think we have anyone, like, too ridiculously old here. I don't know what Andrew Luck's going to bring to the table. I think overall the defense has gotten worse on the stat sheet, like, overall-wise. Um, but I think it's better for, like, future growth and potential. I still have to decide what I want to do with DJ Swearinger. Uh, and Jamal Adams came with three skill points, so he's going to get upgraded. 
to either a 91, 92, maybe even a 93 overall. It all depends because sometimes it's plus one, sometimes it, it doesn't move, sometimes it even goes up two. Looks like he's going to settle at a 92 overall, and he does. So 92 overall for Jamal Adams. Really good player to trade for. His own coverage goes up by four. He looks pretty ridiculous. And what do I do with DJ Swearinger? I mean, it's a great question. Ryan Anderson's going to start at left outside linebacker. We're going to stick in the 3-4. And what do we do? Caleb Brantley, I might want to move to defensive tackle. Because I feel like that's what he played at Florida. And even though he, like you would say he's a 3-4 end here, I think his overall at defensive tackle will be higher. I think that will give him more trade value. It'll probably let him see the field a little bit more often. As even in the base 3-4, they get on the field. So he stays at a 70. What do I do with DJ Swearinger? Do I play Jamal Adams in the box as a linebacker? 6-1-2-13, he'd be real light. Ha, Clinton Dix is kind of like the same profile. I think, what would Jamal Adams overall be at middle linebacker? We'd play him basically as a hybrid money backer this first season. If he's anywhere close to 80, he's going to play middle linebacker for season one. And then we'll make a decision on DJ Swearinger in the future. And his overall is a 92. That is pretty ridiculous. Uh, well, I mean, there you have it. He's got real low block shed, but pretty good tackle. And then amazing zone coverage. Amazing speed. What's his man coverage? 86. He can only even play cornerback. He'll play linebacker for now. All right, so we're at the midseason mark. I might as well do some re-signings while we're here. Kind of weird, but um, we got AP, AD all day. Preston Smith, Jamison Crowder, Hawkland Dix. Do I want to bring back my guy here? It wouldn't It wouldn't make sense to, so I, I'm not going to. Jamison Crowder is kind of a weird one, as is Preston Smith. I like Preston Smith a lot. Haha ha Clinton Dix is the only one I'm going to resign right now, though. So we, we retain Haha, ha, but I'm not going to worry about anybody else right now. We're going to deal with them at the end of the season, which I will now simulate too. So I will see you guys for the playoffs. We are 3 2 and 1. Giants are 0 and 7. We'll see what we end up performing uh, record wise. So we didn't make the playoffs. Do have some skill point upgrades and uh, the regression. Has not hit yet. It hits after the Super Bowl. We finished 6, 9, and 1. Nice. Nice. However, it was a failure of a season. Andrew Luck balled out, though. 4,600 passing yards, which was second in the NFL. 31 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. Adrian Peterson averaged 4 yards per carry. Darius Geis under 3. 8 touchdowns, though. AP or AD with 5. Jamison Crowder led a team in catches. However, Josh Doxson had the most yards and touchdowns at 905 and 6, respectively. Quarterback sacks, not a whole ton allowed. Offensive line was pretty good. Jamal Adams led our team in tackles. Four tackles for loss only, but block shed's very low. Deron Payne with 15, 14 for Jonathan Allen, 13 for Matt Ioannidis. Maybe that's why he can't get any tackles for loss, because this entire defensive line is just sucking him up. Quarterback sacks, five for Jonathan Allen, led the team, four for Ryan Anderson, three and a half for Ioannidis. Interceptions, two for DJ Swearinger, led the team as he was the starter at strong safety. He moved Jamal Adams, as you'll remember. And then defensive touchdowns, DJ Swearinger and Quinton Dunbar. 16th ranked offense. And the 11th ranked defense. Yearly awards, we have Drew Brees winning the MVP. No Andrew Luck in there, man. NFC Offense Player of the Year. Show me Andrew Luck at number 8. Defense Player of the Year. Jamal Adams at number 10. Offense Rookie of the Year goes to Josh Rosen. Darius Geis at number 9. And then Defense Rookie of the Year, Fred Warner. Two bucks in here. Carlton Davis, really. Vita Vea. And no other Redskins. So that is season number 1. I think we've made some good changes. Not time to get complacent now. To go to the offseason, we do have a couple potential re-signings to make based on how we upgrade these guys. And let's go to the offseason. How many points does James Crowder have? One. He is young. He does have quick development. Oh, is that down to normal? Did he lose it? Yeah, he did. Wow. Hmm. What do you want contract-wise? That's gonna be that's gonna be the question about whether we re-sign him or not. Adrian Peterson um, should be in here, or maybe he retired. And he retired. Wow, all right. 
Preston Smith also normal dev. He might already have that though. I still I want to re-sign him. I want it, uh, it takes 18k for him to go up one level if you can see under the 80 overall. That's how much it costs him to get one skill point, which is pretty brutal. I think I'm going to resign him anyway. And then Jamison Crowder. I'm going to resign Jamison Crowder. So Preston Smith and Jamison Crowder are both back. I want to improve the offensive line a lot. I think left tackle and right tackle are fine as Trent Williams regresses down to a 91. Morgan Moses did not get better. Is it Rulier or is it Rulier? Either way, he's a 78 overall. We don't necessarily need to replace him considering how young he is at 26. Normal development is bad. We are sure. So I definitely want to improve left guard, maybe right tackle, running back for sure. Defensively, uh, I want a middle linebacker. I want a cornerback. I want to trade DJ Swearinger because he is 28 now. He's going to regress. Normal development. Did he lose quick? Yeah. I mean, we have to trade him. Yeah, I don't like the options in free agency, so I'm not going to worry about signing a running back. We're just going to go to the draft. All right, we pick at number two overall. Not bad. Jets at number one. They take an 85 overall quarterback. Bye-bye, Sam Darnold. Jets are moving on with an LSU QB. Yo, Duran Perry looks really, really good. We could take him and transition into a 4-3. We already do have two defensive tackles, really, in Duran Payne and Jonathan Allen, the Alabama boys. This entire defense is basically Alabama, if you hadn't noticed. Cassius Meyer looks really good as a running back, but the low speed bothers me, so I'm not sure he's our guy. All right, I found my guy here. Whoa, I didn't even see you. So it's either Bakari Floyd or Dixon Janti. They both look very, very good. Just which one would I prefer? I think I'm honestly leading towards Bakari Floyd. In which case, I could probably trade down. He's a bit faster. Has great jumping. He's overall, he just looks better. The one thing that Dixon has over Bakari is uh is route running. I'm going to take Bakari Floyd now. I'm not going to trade down. Welcome to the Washington Redskins. He's an 81 overall with quick development. And we will look at the other receiver uh, when we get to the end of the draft. But he has 90 speed. See, yeah, his route running is not good, but his catching is. 86 catching, 84 catching traffic, 90 spec catch, 88 release. He looks very solid. Ranked at number 7 in the entire class. Or he picked next at 12. There's a chance we could get both of them, I guess. As Sherman Tracy goes to Ole Miss, or to the Colts out of Ole Miss. All right, I found my franchise left guard. OJ Murphy out of Nebraska looks ridiculous. Great top three skills. Great 40. Insane bench press. Welcome to the Washington Redskins. 80 overall quick development. Drafted him right at number 12, which is his true talent in the draft. 95 strength, 75 speed, 89 impact blocking, 81 run block. Pass block is a little bit low but he will be our left guard of the future. A significant upgrade over Jonathan Cooper, I would say. Do you guys think there are enough first caliber or first round caliber quarterbacks in this class? Holy hell. And there have been a bunch that have already gone off the board. There have been at least two. Two of these guys are from Miami. What's going on here? All right, I'm going to reach down the board with back-to-back -back picks here in the second round. First one is going to be Dawson Compton out of Rutgers. Good top three skills. He's probably the most athletic of any of the cornerbacks we've seen so far in this class. I checked them out. They were all real slow, like 4'6 and up speed. He was the closest guy to the 4'5s, and that's only 88 speed. He's got good zone, good press. His man coverage is not great. Uh, I don't know what we'd really do with that. And then my next pick will be a middle linebacker, also going down the board. This is Jorvante Draper out of Illinois. The Fighting Illini, great top three skills. Good 40-yard dash, pretty much. Good bench press. Good vertical. Welcome to the Washington Redskins. 74 overall quick development. Really, is he that bad? I guess that's not bad, but like... I thought he was going to be like a 78. 82 speed, 86 tackle. 76 block shed isn't great, but 83 hit power, 85 pursuit. Decent zone coverage. Man is real low, but power moves are kind of high. Why is he such a low overall? 
based on his stats here, his attributes. It feels like he should be higher. I don't know. Time for the draft recap. I am really interested to see not only all of these quarterback overalls, but some of these wide receivers that we saw. Number one. So we did get a really good player here. Let's sort by overall. See this draft class. So 85, 82, 82. There's a quarterback. So it looks like Dixon Gianti or Genti out of Nebraska and Bakari Floyd were both the same overall. Bakari has more speed, same acceleration, slightly higher agility. Um, although Dixon has slightly higher strength, slightly higher carrying, worse ball carry vision, elusiveness, higher juke move, higher spin move, higher stiff arm, same break tackle, slightly worse trucking, but here's where it really matters. So he's got minus one to catching, minus three catch and traffic, plus three spectacular catch, plus four short route running, plus 10 medium route running, same deep route running, same release, worse jumping. So, they're very similar. He catches a bit worse, but he runs better routes, and he's a worse athlete. I think I'd rather have Bakari Floyd, but you couldn't really have gone wrong either way. And then, I mean, look at all these quarterbacks, and a bunch of running backs as well. This was an interesting draft class. These cornerbacks kind of sucked. Not going to lie. All right, big trade. DJ Swearinger, Josh Doxson, and a second-round pick are headed to Denver as we get one of the best defensive rookies in the NFL this past season. And that, well, I guess it's still going on. So this season, Bradley Chubb. He's going to play outside linebacker for us. We're going to move Preston Smith over, who is also going to play outside linebacker, but he's just going to play on that left side. We're still going to hopefully get a lot of pressure, maybe even some more this time. We didn't get a whole lot of sacks, but defensive line performed well. Maybe Bradley Chubb will add to that standing up uh i think that's going to be a really good combo jamal adams obviously is now going to move back to strong safety a position that suits him much more in my opinion rather than middle linebacker i really wish that you couldn't just move a safety to middle linebacker and then suddenly he's sick and vice versa feels uh kind of backwards but he is a sick safety this means that Javante uh, draper we drafted at illinois is going to start which i'm actually for i think he's pretty good Defensive line, all 87s. Cornerbacks, we need to improve upon that, but we will probably next season. I'm still looking for a running back and a wide receiver, but overall, I think we're in a really good spot. So I am going to simulate to the midseason mark, and I will catch up to you guys then. Four and three is the midseason mark, although the Giants are five and two. The NFC East is, once again, just like in the Eagles video, just a, a mismatch of whoever plays wins and then. They lose the next game, win the next game, which I think the Redskins have done over like the last 40 games around like a win-loss combo. It was really, really odd. I forget what the exact stat is, so I'm not going to pretend like I do remember because I do not. We're going to use the Coach XP on the linebacker spot, that position group. And somehow Jamison Crowder is playing over Bakari Floyd, which is not going to happen. Let's go ahead and upgrade all. Bakari Floyd is a sick name, by the way. Bakari. Big fan. I don't know why. Big fan, though. Let's go ahead and reorder. So that Floyd is going to play. No, and Jameson Crowder's back to the slot. No, it's not happening. I want Bakari Floyd to have both wide receiver two and slot receiver ability. All right, team is looking pretty good. This is the offense, in case you care. And then this is the defense, upgraded. Things are going pretty well. Things are going pretty well. I think we're moving in the right direction. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of guys who are not familiar faces with this original Redskin team. Brandon Scherf will be a free agent at the end of the year. This is a player that we really need to bring back, as well as Matt Ioannidis, uh, Colt McCoy. I don't know about that. Sorry. So Scherf and Matt Ioannidis are both back. So we are ready to simulate now to the playoffs. I'm not sure if we're going to make it here in year two. We're four and three, certainly not out of it. We'll need to have a really good second part of the season to try and get any type of separation here in the NFC East because it's highly contested right now. If the Giants, Eagles, and Cowboys are winning a lot of games, yeah, we're just not going to make the playoffs. We finished eight, seven, and one, a slight improvement on the first season as we tie against the Eagles in week 17, 20 to 20, which still would have not put us in the playoffs. We would have been a been a nine and seven 
So not great. Eagles would have been uh, 10 and 6. They're still above us. Still would have finished dead last. We needed to perform a little bit better a little bit earlier. But we will check out the stats, see how we got here. See who performed well. Andrew Luck uh, got worse by a lot somehow. Why? We got better offensively. I don't really know about what happened there. Darius Geis, slightly better season. Samaj P. Ryan also, who is all right. Paul Richardson, seven touchdowns. Bakari Floyd, six touchdowns, 879 yards and 64 catches. Kyle Fuller. Oh, okay. I guess there's a there's an offensive guard named Kyle Fuller. All right. I didn't know that. Ruben Foster led the league in tackles with one, or led the team in tackles with 119. Also seven tackles for loss. But Bradley Chubb at 14, 12 for Preston Smith, 12 for Ioannidis, 10 for Deron Payne. Quarterback sacks, six for Preston Smith, led the team. Interceptions, we have three for Jamal Adams, Dawson Compton, the rookie out of Rutgers, haha, -ha, Clinton Dix, two for Ruben Foster, Monte Nicholson, and Quinton Dunbar. Why is Monte Nicholson playing enough to get that many interceptions? I have no idea. Force fumbles, only three. And then defensive touchdowns, zero for the entire team. 29th best offense. Probably got to improve upon that. And then the 12th best defense. So our defense is performing well. Todd Gurley wins the MVP. I doubt we're going to see any Redskins anywhere in here. Offense player of the year is Todd Gurley. No Redskins defense player of the year, Khalil Mack. Ruben Foster at number six. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Bakari Floyd. No Redskins. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Killian Howell. Dawson Compton at three. Javante Draper at number four. Roy Green, whomever that is, at number six. Weird. Cowboys beat the Jags 24-21. Not trying to re-sign anybody. So we are going to go into free agency. What positions do we need to improve upon? Still maybe running back. Tackle at this point, probably. And then, um, I still think wide receiver. And then defensively, middle linebacker, perhaps, and cornerback. And maybe three, four outside linebackers. So defensive end could work. Yannick Ngakwe would work really well at left outside linebacker. I see the Broncos going after him, trying to replace Bradley Chubb. I just, I, I feel like we get him too often. I like Yannick Ngakwe a lot. Just, uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want Derrick Henry. Don't want Shaq Thompson. I don't want anybody. We pick at number 18. Not exactly a really valuable first round pick here. As a cornerback goes to Tampa Bay, a position that we were looking at for sure. Casey Barty out of Oklahoma looks ridiculous. 6'1", 227. I mean, that that's almost like middle linebacker level at 4.45 speed. Marquise McAfee looks really, really good. He's just a bit slower out of Notre Dame. LaJarvis Swan. I almost want to take a player and move back up. This is a pretty good class. Even a, like a really good looking center here. Great. Wow, this, this draft class is really talented. I'm taking this strong safety out of Oklahoma. We'll figure out what to do, him, do with him later. This is best player available sort of situation, and we did not miss. Ranked at number two in the entire class, 82 overall star development, 90 speed, 78 zone, 88 tackle, 83 pursuit, 88 acceleration. Block shedding is a 75, which is not terrible. 77 man, 86 hit power, good play rec. Awareness can get boosted later. Yeah, this guy's a beast. Really, really good player. I would have no problem moving him to middle linebacker. And the question now is, do I trade back up? What would it cost? I'm not going to do it with the Giants. I might try it with, uh, and there goes LeJarvis Swan. Ah, oh, crap, dude. Like, Duncan McBriar looks almost like a tackle at 6'4", 314. Incredible bench. I need, I need to move back up for a center. I can't imagine my saying that, but yeah. Marquise McAfee is an 80 overall, so very good player. And I think, I mean, the Titans won't need a center, more than likely. Falcons won't. With the Bears, I don't think so. I take an 80 overall. Uh, I, I Maybe the Steelers would take one. All right, it's going to be straight up here. Javante Draper got us a first-round pick from the Steelers. 
There's another linebacker that we could take, but I figure if we drafted the strong safety to play middle linebacker, we don't need Gervonta Draper anymore. So I am going to take this center. Duncan McBriar out of Notre Dame. Looks ridiculous, so I have to. 80 overall, quick development. Ranked number 13 in true talent. We took him at 28. 93 strength, 81 run block. 77 pass block. 82 lead block with 90 impact blocking. 69 speed. Nice. Round three, BJ DuBose looks like the best player here. Don't think he's going to end up starting, but if he's like near 80, I will start him over Morgan Moses. Nice star development though. 73 overall, star development. 83 run block, 81 pass block. He's very well rounded, just low lead block and low impact blocking with 85 strength. Like he's a good player, but will I really start him over Morgan Moses? Probably not. I think I'm just going to move the center over to tackle. I think he projects well there. Oh, Marshall Calico out of Harvard. Decent enough combine. Good top three skills. We're going to take him here in the fifth round. 74 overall star development. I think that more than makes up for um, our good friend, Jorvante. I have no clue what his last name was. They're very similar players. Very similar. Jorvante Draper was his name. Okay. All right, that's going to do it for the draft. All right, Casey Bartry is going to move to middle linebacker. At 227 pounds, I really don't feel bad doing that. And it's not like there haven't been safeties that have moved to middle linebacker and found success. Mark Barron, somewhat. Dayon Buchanan. Others, I'm sure. <laughs> can't think of any. I know Jeremy, I, I, plenty have moved to linebacker. I just can't think of many that have actually had a ton of success. I mean, if you, if you count college, which we wouldn't, because why would we? But I don't know. Hassan Reddick worked his way up to a first-round pick after being a safety at Temple and then moving to a linebacker to edge hybrid position. How much does Mark Barron weigh? It's got to be like 227. It's got to be like right the same. Where did he go? Corey Little didn't 225. He plays. He's not very good. I know. What do you mean? He's great. He tackles guys. So he's a terrible run defender. He. I think a lot of that probably has to do with weight. Where is Mark Barron? We gotta find him. Now, I could Google it, but that takes away from the visual aspect of seeing it in-game. But uh, point being, you see a lot of these guys, actual players in the league. Miles Jack was a running back slash defensive player at UCLA, now full-time linebacker. I mean, a lot of these guys are right. Even Quan Alexander, 227. So I have no problem moving this safety down. Ruben Foster, 228. Is he really only? I would have pegged him like 240. Or like 235. I can't find Mark Barron. I am curious, though. Well, Wikipedia is giving him, or Google is giving him 214. And then Wikipedia gives him 230. What does NFL say? 230? Yeah, damn. Mark Barron's big. He's, he weighs more than uh, Ruben Foster. That's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, again... I have no problem moving someone that's close to 230 in middle linebacker. He should be a beast. This is the team for season number three. I think it's a really fun team. Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen. That's like such a good combo. It really is. And then like, I don't want, I want to keep saying like. Um, this is like an all SEC team almost. Haha, -ha, Alabama. Jonathan Allen, Alabama. Deron Payne, Alabama. Reuben Foster, Alabama. Ryan Anderson, Alabama. Jamal Adams, LSU. Quentin Dunbar, Florida. And then, of course, you have some outliers. Monte Nicholson is uh, Michigan State in the Big Ten. Bradley Chubb, NC State, clearly not in the SEC. Fabian Moreau, I believe, is UCLA, which is back 12. Yeah. And uh, Ioannidis is Temple which is not the SEC. Preston Smith, Mississippi State, SEC. And then we have uh, like our drafted players, like Bartree, who I don't even remember where he's from. Oklahoma, Big 12. Uh, but yeah, a lot of Alabama players. A lot of LSU guys. A lot of, a lot of SEC players on that defense. And then offensively, oh, another Florida guy in Jordan Reed. You know, it's, it's a pretty good team. We'll look to see how they can perform. And yeah, let's go ahead and use some Coach XP and simulate two. The midseason mark. Four and four at the midseason mark. Jamal Adams will be a free agent. Cowboys currently atop the NFC East. We just lost 42 to 7 to the Eagles. Jesus. 
It's going to be Jamal Adams, Jonathan Allen. Jamal Adams is a 99 overall now, by the way. Jonathan Allen, Trent Williams, Ruben Foster, Quentin Dunbar, Tress Way, Fabian Moreau. We have a lot of guys to re-sign. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I'm probably done with Fabian Moreau. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. So, Tress Way and everyone to the left of him have re-signed. Fabian Moreau, Chase Rillier, I have not even contacted at all. Same thing with Dustin Hopkins, Monte Nicholson. I could probably find a better kicker and a better backup safety. I don't know. We're going to go to the playoffs. I will see you there. Hopefully, we make it in season three I would like that and we have made the playoffs at nine and seven just above of the Eagles and Giants just above them Andrew Luck about 4,000 passing yards 31 touchdowns 10 interceptions good season for him rushing Darius guys 1200 yards seven touchdowns average just over four per carry which is good Bakari Floyd led her team in catches however Jamison Crowder went off in the slot over a thousand yards and 10 TDs blocking Offensive line was solid-ish overall. Defensively, the rookie led our team in tackles with 110. Casey Bartry out of Oklahoma. Matt Ioannidis led in tackles for loss. And then quarterback sacks, 7.5 for Jerron Payne led. Again, not a whole ton of pressure from any one player. Four interceptions for Quinton Dunbar is pretty cool. And then forced fumbles, only three for the entire team. As well as three recoveries. It's a fantastic 100% uh, recovery rate. And then we were the 19th best team in terms of offense and the 28th in defense. This is not a playoff caliber team. Yet we made the playoffs, so I can't complain. Curtis Larson, now an 89 overall, won the MVP with the now 12 and 4 Jets. No Redskins. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott. Defensive Player of the Year, Leighton Vander Esch. Two Cowboys and no Redskins. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Kerry Yoder. Interesting, no Redskins. Defensive rookie of the year, Martin Tate. Casey Bartry at number two. Robbed. This is the fully upgraded team. 90 overall, 93 offense, 95 defense. Offensive line is solid, although not amazing. Jordan Reed is regressing quite a bit. And then the receiving core, Bakari Floyd is up to an 87 overall. Did he have star development? Did he lose it? He might have only had quick. Either way, doesn't particularly matter. So he's progressing pretty quickly. And then defensively, Deron Payne killing it. Jamal Adams, 99 overall. Bartree, 83. Reuben Foster up to an 88. He has star development. Well, I guess that's down to quick now. It was at star. Yeah. I, we, why is he losing it, man? I hate when they take away your development. It's bull. We don't have good cornerbacks, really. Fabian Rose up to an 81. Quentin Dunbar is at an 83. But we will hop in the playoffs and play the moments and see if we can win this team a Super Bowl here in year 3. 90 versus 90. Redskins Rams. Coming up next. All right, exciting game thus far. 10-7 to in the second half, and we will hop in on third down in the third quarter. Seven seconds left to play, and I don't even know if the Rams are going to get this snap off. Let's use our bar treat. No, that's going to be the end of the half. All right, we'll pick back up in the fourth quarter. Now in the fourth quarter, let's make a big stop on third and ten. Let's throw to Todd Gurley. I mean, that's an easy wrap-up. We'll give him the field goal and they can tie, but I don't want to give up the first down, so I'll, I'll allow that. Oh, we just scored like that. 17-10. Final drive of the game. We're not trying to score. I feel like I'm just going to run the ball. Probably won't show much of it. And the boos are raining down here in L.A. As I think Rams fans have realized they're out of the playoffs pretty early. And that is the game. Redskins beat the Rams 17-10. Jared Goff, what a game. 44 completion percentage. 44%. Pretty good. Ooh, the divisional is against the Cowgirls. Okay. <laughs> what a lame insult. Yeah, you're damn right. But they went 12-4. and four. They won the division. We got to go into AT&T and try to beat this team there. And 92 overall. This will not be easy. All right. Red zone alert. Just over a minute to play here in the first half. That sun is just kind of glaring through. A lot of shadows. We'll see if we can score a touchdown here and take the lead before halftime. Andrew Luck wearing number six is gross. 
That is wide open, though. We're going to hit Floyd. It's Bakari Floyd. Look at the power. Picks up the first down, I think. Yeah. Rolling out with luck. We're going to throw that. It's complete to Jamison Crowder. He's got the touchdown, and there's no real point to go for the two-point conversion as we are now into the second half. Let's take over. Let's keep the drive alive and see if we can't find the end zone. At the very least, I don't want to turn over the football because that would take us, obviously, out of field goal range because we wouldn't be able to kick it. But I am going to throw that pass. Paul Richardson. I mean, that's just a bad throw because that's a touchdown. Come on, Andrew. And that win? You're saying inside the, the stadium here, Jerry World, there's 12 mile per hour wind pushing back in like this basically a dome. <laughs> what? It is a really close game. 22-20 here. We might hop in and just try to shoot this one down before it gets out of hand. Could run the ball. Probably would be for the best to burn their timeouts, but it is first and 20. I really would like to convert if possible. So I am going to try that. And that is open. Luck. Sideline. Misses the throw because Paul Richardson was open. Oh, they're, they're they calling that a catch? Mm, that looked out of bounds. I don't know. Yeah, it got overturned. So, yikes. Throwing for Bakari Floyd. It's a nice gain of 10. It's going to be third and long, though. They're blitzing. We're throwing for Bakari. And Floyd drops it. I was rolling out as he was getting open. It was really bad timing. A field goal is going to give us a five-point lead, but we are still certainly far from out of the woods. And we forced a turnover, or four and out, three and out, I should say, really easily. And then the Cowboys scored. What? Give me Bakari Floyd deep. He burned him, and he drops it. The ball is underthrown. What is going on? Is that the game or what? How is Andrew Luck missing all these? We're going to throw it up deep to Bakari Floyd. Man, this uh, that's not working, it looks like. And I get sacked. Fantastic. Nice to see the defense can hold up in simulation there at the end of the game when it counts. There's no point. The game's over. So that sucks, but uh, per usual, my team can't survive in sim. <laughs> the Cowboys were better, though, so I'm not, I'm not really too mad about it. Texans beat the Falcons at the Super Bowl 28-14. to I don't really feel like re-signing these guys. I'm going to... Maybe do it, but in free agency. I'm not I'm not re-signing them here. I'm hoping for a better center and a top-tier cornerback. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm not really seeing it. So we got back uh, our starting center and Fabian Moreau, starting cornerback. But if there is a better CB or center in the draft, I will be taking them, 100%. There goes Twun Milburn. What a name. T-W-U-N. Twun. Sure. This linebacker looks really solid. Not fast, per se, but looks very good. This CB is a real looker here. 4-4-6 four, four, speed with decent top three skills. Not really a man cover corner, unfortunately. The CBs have been really weak in this particular, uh, this particular rebuild video. It's been really annoying because we've needed one. Dylan Spaghetti could be a good pick. Dexter Webster. They're not bad. I'm going to go with the cornerback just because uh, I think we need one of those more. He's going to be like a 70... He's going to be like a 75 overall, probably. 75 on the nose. Normal development. 91 speed, 75, uh, 75 man, 81 zone, 84 press. He's not terrible. The CPU just values man coverage so, so highly. So his overall is... Uh, is worse. Jaren Hansen. Hello, Jaren. 4 3 3 speed. Okay. I'm actually going to take him. First round caliber player. Good top three skills. He's like upgraded Jamison Crowder, maybe. 77 overall. First round player. Um, I think, right? 31, barely. 96 speed. Pretty good. Short route running is low, but he's a real big deep threat, I think. Pretty solid center for the fourth round. 74 overall star development. I like it. He can't start. That is the end of the draft. 
Pretty sweet team. Really, really good. We'll see how we perform here in season number four. We don't really have any major weak points. Cornerback is obviously not great. It's not bad. Wish it were better, but we are where we are. No coach XP will matter at this point. So let's go ahead, advance a week, and I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Four and three here at the midseason mark, as are the Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles still very much in it at three and four. And we'll see if we can beat them. Not going to worry about re-signing anybody right now. Deron Payne is nearly up to a 94, and he will be with his new upgrade. Casey Bartry is going to be looking at probably an 86, maybe even an 87 overall. But probably 86. 91 offense. 97 defense. Bartree is an 86 overall. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys for the playoffs. All right. So we went 9-7 and seven again. As did the Cowboys. Giants went 8-8. Eight and eight. So we barely managed to sneak into the playoffs. Andrew Luck was not much better. Low touchdowns. Yards are eh, all right. Darius Geis had a great season. About 1,300 yards. 14 touchdowns receiving. Bakari Floyd... Letter team in catches and yards. However, Jamison Crowder still at eight touchdowns. That slot receiver gets targeted so much in the red zone, it appears. Trent Williams was disastrous. Casey Bartry led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss, 12 from Jonathan Allen. Led the team. Quarterback sacks still, like, pretty much none, which is weird. Not a whole lot of interceptions either. This this team is not performing well, which just shows, like, how weird Sim can be sometimes because this is obviously a very good team. Yet we don't perform offensively or defensively as Todd Gurley wins the MVP. No Redskins in there. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Todd Gurley. No Redskins. Defensive Player of the Year is Blake Martinez. No Redskins. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Ross Watson. A couple Redskins in there at the end. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Cameron Cave. No Redskins. Sounds like a porn star name, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Um, wild Card Playoff versus the Bears. Let's hop back in, play the moment, see if we can win. 13 nothing. I mean, the Bears haven't done anything. And, of course, it's the end of the game, so now they're, they're going to start. Jesus, dude. Skip moment, please. Skip moment. Thank God. 13-7. to We beat the Bears. I swear, in simulation, the uh, uh, CPU team doesn't do anything until the very end of the game. And we always choke the lead. Thank God we held on there. All right. Falcons, Redskins. They're 12 and 4. We are a very, very slightly higher overall, but still we are though. Pretty good game so far. 17 to 6. Atlanta answers making it 17 and 9 here in the third quarter before we go back up 20 to 17 as the Falcons score again. We have the ball? I think maybe. That looks like a punt. We might have to jump back in here. What's going on? Alright, we got the ball. Up by three. Just over two and a half minutes to play here. It's second and four. Try to cut back up. Darius Geis breaks a tackle. Wow, great run to pick up the first down there. Third and four, picking up the easy first down. We're going to spin back just so uh, they burn their final timeout, get some more time, taking off that clock, and we'll look to come out of here with another win. And that knee is going to seal the deal on the NFC Divisional. And we're headed to the conference championship. GG Atlanta. Moving on. All right. We got the Rams. They went 11 and 5. How good are they? 93. All right. Very close game right now. About to head into halftime. And the Rams probably will score a touchdown. It's 17 17 in the second half. I am doing my best not to jump in right now. But please keep the drive alive. Andrew Luck. Thank you. 24 17. We got a touchdown lead, 27-17, now up to 10 points, now 34-17. Rams are not out of it yet, but it looks like if we score here, it is certainly game over either way. And that is the final, 34-23, and this Washington Redskins team is headed to the Super Bowl. Jaguars went 15-1. I hope to God their quarterback is Robbie Bortles. They are a 90 overall. It went 15-1. Okay, show me Blake. Show me Robbie Bortles. Come on. I saw it pop up on the screen. Their quarterback is indeed Blake Robbie Bortles. Jamison Crowder got injured, and we are down 20-7 to right now. Not good. 
That is the end of the first half. We're down by two touchdowns. Do we receive at least? Yes. All right. I need to score. Oh, my goodness. Jamison Crowder back in the game drops it. AJ Boye covered both of those routes. But, like, you're telling me that wasn't open? I'm going for it. I got to step up here. We're going to try and run. That's just just an absolute disaster scenario. Nothing was open. They covered absolutely everything. That's unfortunate. Third and one. Make a play, Fabian. Moreau just watched that one go right by him. Throw the ball underneath, please, Robbie. You know you want to throw a pick. He finds Reuben Foster in the end zone, and I accidentally took it out. I'll take it. Great play by Foster. You, you knew Robbie would want to throw an interception this game. Do we already turn over the ball? Come on. Didn't even give me a moment. Down 23 to 7. We finally get a moment. Had to step up on defense and shut him down. It just might be too much of a monumental task at this point to come back in this game. With only four minutes to go. It's third and four. We just got to take a deep shot. Bakari Floyd, go up and get it. Finally making one of those aggressive catches. Touchdown, Bakari Floyd. We're going to be down 23-14. All right, Bakari. <laughs> Subtle. I like it. It's going to be tough. We need to hold him to a field goal or less. Oh, we did it. However, play the moment. Screw me. It's fourth and ten. That's the two-minute warning. It just took 20 seconds off the clock. How many timeouts do we have? Still three. Hmm. That's a tough throw. Luck hits it. Bakari Floyd down the sideline. Stiff arming out of bounds. What a crucial fourth down conversion. And I am stopping the moments here. I'm going to make sure we uh, score. So I'm getting out of here. It's fourth down. I have no idea who my receivers are right now. Neighbors, Hanson, and Paul Richardson, I guess. I feel like the streak is the best bet and just hope he beats press. We're rolling out. We're going to actually have to run for this. Come on, Andrew. Out of bounds. Oh, my God. I suck. Probably should have tried triangle there. We needed to convert. That's a game. Uh, Leonard Fournette gets the first down. And... Um, that is the game. We're going to lose here in the Super Bowl. Could not come back down by uh, multiple touchdowns. Frustrating. So Jags and Robbie Bortles win the Super Bowl. At least we made it here. We'll take one more final look at the team before we get out of here. But I think we built a pretty solid unit. Very solid team. Brandon Scherf got up to a 93, so that just shows how offensive linemen don't really develop here at all. Jordan Reed regressed down to an 84. Uh, Bakari Floyd really was our offensive star up to a 90 and still he's only 25 years old quick development and then defensively I mean Deron Payne was incredible Jonathan Allen Matt Ioannidis fantastic uh, Haha Clinton Dix and Jamal Adams were great and then Reuben Foster Bradley Chubb Bartry Preston Smith it was a good group but that is going to do it for me guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one take it easy Thank you.